Katatapos lang natin ng series na wholehearted, but this time we're going to be talking about a very serious topic. Kaya for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to be so serious. Wala akong joke ngayon, so pwede na lumabas yung mga hapo lang dito, jokes. So, we're starting this new series that says, meron daw pong word na set apart, that means it's stand out, it's unique, it's unparalleled, it's unrivaled, or something that is exceptional. Kumbaga, one of its kind po sa, sa class niya. I'm going to show you the engagement ring that I gave Grace nung kami po yung in-engage. Napalitan yung picture. Eh, pero anyway, kamukha rin naman, Okay. This 14.23 carats, uh, perfect pink ang tawag sa kanya po. It's a diamond po, a rarity for pink diamonds. Actually, cost 23.2 million dollars. Pinag-iipunan ko yan. But can you just imagine, kung magpo-propose ka, sigurado naman kahit hindi ka pa boyfriend nun, pag ganyan ibibigay mo, oo na ang sagot, di ba? I mean, 23.2 million, tas i-divorce ka na lang after ng wedding. You see, this, this, this specific gem is really set apart from all the diamonds in the world because it's, it's talaga yung cut niya, yung pagka-pink niya, that's the reason why it fetched 23.2 million dollars po sa isang auction. Kind of like yung eyes po ni uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Hindi ko kilala to eh. Si, si, si Mr. Pilat kilala to eh, pero hindi ko na inabot to eh. <laughs> so, ito, si, si Elizabeth Taylor daw po may merong violet eyes. I mean, yung eyes niya is really set apart from the rest of our eyes na mga common lang. But you see, those set apart na mga gems, na eyes, we're not going to talk about those kind of stuff. But we're going to talk about God being set apart, the holiness of God. When you say the word holy, mamaya, intindihin natin yan. But we're going to talk about this first week, ano ba yung kaibahan nitong Diyos na sinasamba natin among the gods na sinasamba nitong ibang, ng mga ibang tao dito sa mundo. And very important po yung first week because it will set the stage for the next three weeks because yun naman, in Him, with Him, like Him, yung pagiging set apart natin. Yung tayo po, as Christians, as child of God, as children of God, as sons and daughters, tayo rin po, we're set apart as well. So malino po, si God po muna, pag-uusapan natin ngayon, God being set apart and next week and for the next three weeks, tayo po being set apart naman ng mga anak niya. Why the need to be holy? Bakit pa, Jeff, kailan tayo ma-set apart? Well, here's the thing. When God was, uh, uh, when God had plucked out, tinanggal na po niya yung mga two million plus na Israelites from, from Egypt, sinabi niya kay Moses, For I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I have set you apart. I have created a distinction. Yung Egypt has always been a sign of sins, a symbol of talagang mga kasamaan, nag-aasawa kahit ilan, nagpamapatay, na walang, walang law and all. But then again, sabi ni God, I have set you apart from Egypt. Now, sabi ni God sa, kay Moses, sabi mo to sa mga 2 plus million na, na Israelites that I have set apart. You shall therefore be holy. Why? For I am holy. So God was saying, because I am holy, I am set apart, you as my children should be set apart as well. Kaya lang, merong cringe factor, ano? lalo na in this modern times, para holy, parang ayaw natin ng word ng holy. In fact, kung magpataas ako ng kamay dito, sino sa inyo dito, you feel you're holy? See? Dalawa lang, yun na holy ng misis niya na may babae. Okay. sa kayo na holy ng MMDA kanina. Dal- dalawa lang. <laughs> na holy. Lima. Iba ng ilan na gets, medyo slow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Naantok pa. You see, in these modern times, we're asking this question, is holiness pa sa Is it out fashion? Is it old fashion? Is it for modern times na ngayon? Parang hindi na ngayon, Jeff, yung holy, parang it's a cringe factor. In fact, in a book uh, of Kevin DeYoung entitled The Hole in Our Holiness, he was saying, uh, he gave this illustration about holiness. Uh, meron daw siyang deep respect sa mga campers. You know, campers, yung pupunta sa gubat and then magka-camp with all the preparation, the packing and the planning. They're gonna make life harder. For two to three days or four days or a week, magpapakahirap sila ron, being resourceful and all. Sabi niya, I have deep respect for those campers. But if you ask me, if you, if you ask common Americans, sasabihin lang nila, but it's not my kind of thing. Sila yon, sila ang gagaling nila, hindi sila maliligo isang linggo, mamamana sila ng mga isda and all. But for me, it's not my kind of thing. And same thing, tayo po, we kind of... Uh, uh, illustrate din po yung camping to the way we deal with our personal holiness. 
Ha, sila sa church yan. Naku, yung finicho, mula tanawan tong babae na to, nagbabolunteer. Yan, mga holy yan. Ha, sila Mother Teresa, mababait sa may... Uh, yan yung mga holy. But for me, it's not my kind of thing. Because of this, we didn't grow up with a concern for holiness. Akala mo, okay lang, tinanggap mo si Jesus and then spending the rest of your life attending Sunday service here and that's it. Pero yung holy, wow, it's such a cringe factor. You see, the word holy, listen up. When we think of the word holy, it's something that is attainable. It's, Jeff, it's a long shot for me. It's something that is reserved for selected few. Bakit nga naman? Eh, yung mga naka-attach na bagay sa holy, unang-una, holy water, hey, di ba? Pag narinig mo yung holy water, parang, oo nga, no? hindi, hindi yata pang sa akin yan. Holy Bible, ooh, di ba? Imagine, there's a, there are students po, sila Coach Lester, na pag na-born again, passionate for God, and then pagka nandun sa cafeteria, nandun yung mga kaibigan nilang mga tomador, mga, mga loko-loko, mga green jokes, and then dahil radical na say, maglalabas ng Bible, may share ako sa inyo. Ano reaction? Hey, nako, holy, nako, masusunog kami. Sure, it would be great to be a better person, and you hope na na-save ka naman by grace, maiwasan mo yung mga big sins. Pero na-figure out mo, since I am saved naman by grace, nako yung holy, holy, it's not my kind of thing. I'm so busy. Kasi yung mga tao naka-attach sa holiness, wow, si Pope, holy place. Parang, Jeff, mukhang it's so unattainable to me. Now, here's the problem for us Christians who thought na coming to church will, will be enough at hindi mo ipupursu yung holiness. Ito problema nyo. Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort Sabi nyo nga po, effort. To live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Make every effort to be holy. Why? Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's the problem right there. Yan na po yung problema na ibibigay ko sa inyo. If you don't pursue holiness, at iintindihin natin yan for the next three weeks na natin tira natin. If you're not gonna pursue holiness, personal holiness, then no one will see the Lord. That's how important this preaching is this series is. Because a lot of times, we often celebrate all that Christ has saved us pro- from. Makinig po kayo. Sinesenebrate na natin yung where God has saved us from. From sin, from hell, from condemnation. And we give little thought or making little effort concerning all that Christ has saved us to. Kusang kapapunta has saved us from sin and death and hell, but Christ has also saved us to where? To holiness, to be from glory to glory, to what we call sanctification, because apart from it, we will never see the Lord. That's what the Bible says, apart from holiness. An incomplete view of holiness, kaya napakahalaga po na itong series na to. pag incomplete ang picture mo ng holiness, and most especially the holiness of God, which is what we're going to talk about today, it's very tragic po sa mga Kristiyano. Because here's the thing. If you don't have a complete picture ng holiness ni God, which we're gonna discuss in the next few minutes, unang-una, baka maging passive Christian ka. Alam niyo mga passive Christians, yung mga merong uh, incomplete view ng grace ni God, yung mga hyper-grace na nauuso ngayon, kahit na magkasala ka, okay lang. Because hmm, si God naman, mabait naman siya. In fact, Mangingila ako ng tawad ngayon, pupunta ako ng confession booth o pupunta ako ng victory, hingila ako ng tawad, gagawa ulit ako ng kasalanan Monday, Tuesday. In fact, hihingin ko na yung tawad ko for the next two weeks. We're gonna see God, yung holiness ni God as something that we can play around with, na parang we've learned how to do away sa mga sa system and, and go around the system, so magiging passive Christian ka. On the other side of the pendulum naman, meron naman pong mga uh, uh, self-righteous type of people na pinupursue yung holiness at all costs, wala na si God sa picture, puro works, 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 nagiging self-righteous, ang tingin sa mga ibang Christian, mga mga low-level Christian kayo. And that's why, either way, if you have an incomplete, an incomplete picture, kung ano po yung holiness ni God, then we are gonna have a problem. That's why today, we're gonna understand, para may two-part po yung preaching ko, I'm gonna talk about the holiness of God first, and then the implication of that, but before the implications, we have to understand ano ba talaga holiness ni God? That we have to have a firm foundation, we have to have a firm and solid understanding because the term holy is often understood po ngayon in its contemporary usage na hindi na po biblical. Kaya for this reason, we're gonna study 
we must begin by reviewing several dimensions po ng holiness ni God. So tatlo lang po ito. I'm gonna browse this really quick because mas mahalaga po yung second part ng preaching ko. So pag sinabi natin, God is holy, ano ibig sabihin nun? Here's first one. To be holy, si God, means to be distinct, separate, in a class by oneself. You see, pag sinabi natin yung, yung perfect pink, meron siyang category, mga precious gems. Yung eyes ni Elizabeth Taylor, meron siyang category, mga eyes ng human being. But when you say God being holy, wala siyang category, wala siyang second level gods, wala siyang demigods, wala siyang semigods. No, He is uniquely holy with no rivals or competition. The word holy, tingnan natin yung meaning ng holy, nung una pa siya yung ginamit sa Biblia. The primary meaning of holy is separate. It comes from an ancient word that meant to cut or to separate. Perhaps even more accurate would be the phrase, a cut above something, according to R.C. Sproul. When we find a garment or another piece of merchandise that is outstanding, that is a superior excellence, we use the expression that is a cut above the rest. When the Bible calls God is holy, it means primarily that God is transcendently separate. He is far and above the seemingly parang mahirap siyang intindihan na seemingly so foreign. Yun yung tinatawag natin the otherness of God. Hindi natin masishare yon. He shared some attributes to us. We're thinking people. We, we, we can love. We can have mercy. We can have gracious. Ito pong holiness ni God. Being separate and distinct, this is something that He alone, the glory is Him alone. That's why in Exodus it says, who is like you? When this was written, ito po mga Israelites, they're exposed to many, 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 many mga gods po sa Egypt. Ang Egypt po, dami po nilang gods, mamaya titin natin. Sabi ni Moses, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, and not only you're majestic, you're awesome. <laughs> Sabihin nyo nga, awesome. <laughs> Pinoy na Pinoy, osang. Anong osang? <laughs> awesome daw siya in glorious deeds and doing wonders. Ibig sabihin, he's a miracle working God. Hindi siya God na nasa, nasa pedestal na hindi makagalaw. That's why when Samuel have a glimpse of God, the understanding of God, there is none like the Lord. Walharo po siyang katulad. Wala siyang kahawig, wala siyang kamukha. Yung mga gods nila noong the time na prevalent sa mundo nila, yung mga Baals and all, there is none like the Lord. There is none beside you. Walang second level, walang third tier, wala, wala, walang ganon. Walang mini demigods. And sabi niya, there is no rock like our God when they say the word rock. Wala po tayong sandalan. Wala well, sure foundation that we can put our hopes into and future into aside from this God. Don't you just love worshiping a God na ganito? Imagine kung marami kang option. Alam niyo po yung decision paralysis? And pag nasa buffet ka, ang daming choices, hindi mo alam kung ano kakainin mo, you end up tubig na lang. <laughs> so sometimes, ang daming Diyos ng iba, hindi nila malam sino matatawagan natin ngayon. And during those times, nung sinulat po nung yung Exodus and all, they were surrounded by many gods sa Egypt. Alam niyo po sa Egypt, ang dami nilang Diyos. Isang katutak po yung Diyos nila. May Diyos ko dahil, may apple Diyos, mango Diyos, ang lahat. <laughs> may Diyos sila sa river, sa Nile River, may Diyos sila sa, sa, sa sun, sa moon, lahat. Isang katutak ang Diyos nila, pag absent ang Diyos nila, may umi extra, yung extra Diyos. <laughs> ang dami nilang Diyos. <laughs> Sabi mo, Pastor, walang joke. Oh, may, may mga lumilitaw na impromptu yun, ha? Wala sa notes ko yun, ha? <laughs> may mga extra Diyos dyan. Sa dami nilang Diyos, God is saying, there is none like me. In fact, if you read the Bible, yung ten plagues addresses the ten gods ng Egypt that time. God showed yung Diyos nyo ng river, I'm gonna pound that God. Hindi niya kayang i-convert tong dugo na ginawa ko sa Nile River. He countered all the ten gods in the ten plagues. At yung, yung, yung God of life nila, eventually yung pinakahuling plagues, lahat ng firstborn na matay, hindi ma-counter ng gods nila. And then dumating mga Greek, they have these gods, sila Zeus, kung sino-sino. They are all myths na lang ngayon. They are just movie. But during those times, they used to worship these gods. Kaya nga last week, sinasabi sa inyo, yung mga feng shui, yung mga, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's really something wrong with it. Kung Christian ka na, naniniwala ka pa sa hula, naniniwala ka pa sa feng shui, pastor, wala na mawawala. May mga hip-hop lang naman na pusang gano'n. Merong nawawala. Because God 
is distinct. Hindi mo siya pa may semi-god ka. At tayo po rito sa kultura natin, I, I know if you're, if you're here for the first time, God cannot share His, His glory. That's a reality. Hindi naman namin, basta, sincere sila. But yeah, you can be sincerely wrong. I mean, yung mga nagmaneho po, yung mga nagpilot ng mga aeroplano that killed a lot of people sa 9-11, they, they were sincere. It doesn't mean they're sincere, they're right. Hitler was sincere nung pinatay niya yung millions of Jews. But is he right? So don't think, pastor, mga sincere sila, umiiyak. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you're sincere, you're right. You can be sincerely wrong. That's why it says here, Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord. It is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Wow. Iba sa inyo, natauhan ngayon. Our God is a jealous God. Imagine mo, may asawa ka. Tapos sabi mo sa asawa mo, honey, may uwi ako. Meron lang akong carvings nung ex ko. Pero ex ko to, ha? Hindi, ko lang, hindi ko siya crush. Pero nandito lang siya. Carvings siya full body nung ex ko. Ano sabi na misis mo? <laughs> Tapos tinitinan mo yung ex mo. <laughs> Imagine, ano sabi na mismo? Hindi ako magsishare ng time and attention dito sa carved idols na to. And that's the same thing we're doing. If we're not focusing on our God. Because our God is distinct. He's separate. He's holy. Number two, we're going to plunge to this. For God to be holy means it's for Him to be holy in relationship with every, to every aspect of His nature and character. Simply, Jeff, ang lalalim ngayon. Yeah, medyo deep tayo ngayon. Ito lang po. When we use the word holy to describe God, we face another problem. Because we often describe God po, uh, uh, parang it's a compiling list of characteristics or what we call attributes. See, God is loving, merciful, gracious. Pero yung holy, you, when you use the word holy, okay, the word holy is used as a synonym for His deity. That is, the word holy calls attention to all that God is. It m- reminds us that His love is holy love. His justice Holy justice. His mercy, holy mercy. His knowledge, holy knowledge. His spirit, his holy spirit. Kumbaga, when the word holy is applied to God, it does not signify one single attribute. On the contrary, God is called holy in general sense. Next experience na ba yung mga tao na pagka nakakancer yung kamag-anak, sabi, hindi loving si God. Pagka hindi nabigyan yung, yung kapatawaran yung kasalanan niya, parang feeling niya hindi, hindi mapagpatawad si God. But no one will, she, will say, Hindi holy si God. We can say He's not loving, He's not gracious, He's not, he's not, he's not um, uh, uh, merciful. Pero when you say, si God hindi holy, hindi natin nababanggit yon, Because it really r- runs contrary, kahit sa isip natin, that God is always holy. Number three, to be holy is to be morally pure. Pag sinabi natin holy, during the times in the Bible po, uh, uh, they're... they're when they're consecrating, when they're making holy po yung mga items for the use foods in sa temple, it means they are consecrated, they are set apart unto purity. They are to be used in a pure way. So yung mga elements po na ginagamit sa temple during those times, they are holy, they are, they are morally pure. Yung mga tao po na sinasabi, you are holy. Yung mga priests, they should, they should be morally pure. Kaya pag sinabi dito, God is holy, sinatanong dito sa Psalm 24 verse 3, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. Sino yung makakalapit sa kanya? Sino yung makakatayo in this holy place? Who can stand before God, this holy God? Kasi po, he's morally pure. He cannot allow impurity na lumapit sa kanya. In fact, parang magnet yan, hindi magko-connect. Laging it, it repels. Ayaw ni God. In fact, he hid his face to those people po na hindi holy because of sin. You know, see, sabi ng psalmist, Sino makakatayo sa tabi niya? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. The holiness of God is not merely a theological subject na ipupurso lang po ng isang mga pastor or scholars. But indeed, the holiness of God is a matter of great importance po sa bawat isa sa atin. Pag hindi niyo po ito naiintindihan, pag hindi niyo nakita na si God is morally pure, then you're gonna toy with sin. Then you're gonna play with your life. Then you're gonna see na, okay, si God naman pala, pwede naman pala nakatikit yung mata niya sa mga ko, 
then we have a problem. Kung may incomplete picture ka. Now, here's the problem that we are facing. If we're saying that God is holy, distinct, He won't share His glory to anyone, He is morally pure, then here's the problems of Romans 3.23. For all of us here, everyone na pinanganak po sa mundo na to, we all came from Adam. And we know everyone po na nanggaling kay Adam was tainted with sin. After po ni Adam at ni Eve, lahat ng pinanganak nila, by nature, were sinners. And then the Bible says, for all have sinned. And then, since God is holy, ayaw niya ng sin. Ito problema natin. For all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By nature, we're sinful. Birds fly because they're birds. Fish swim because they're fish. Man sin because we're sinners. By nature. Left to ourselves, and default natin is to sin. I was watching this American funny, America's Funniest Home Video na two-year-old na bata. Nahuli nung nanay niya, two, three years old. No, may camera, of course, video. Nahuli nung nanay niya kumakain ng sprinkles. I'm sure some of you napanood to sa YouTube. Kumakain ng sprinkles. And then, nung nakita niya yung nanay niya, tinakpan niya, tinabi niya. Sabi nung mami niya, are you eating those sprinkles? No. I mean, three years old. Marunong magsinungaling. No. What's that on your mouth? Ganoon niya yung sprinkles. Nothing. I mean, three-year-old, marunong magsinungaling. Sa nakuha yun. Hello. Because it's innate in us. We don't become a sinner because we sin. No, 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 no. We're sinners. That's why we sin. So lahat tayo have sinned and is against God. That's why the implications po ng holiness ni God. Ito po, because God is holy. Ano po yung implikasyon? Ano po yung resulta nito na God being holy? Tayo naman lahat sinful. Tatlo po yung words sa pag-uusapan natin. There's wrath that is coming. Judgment is on the way. And we're all gonna die. Good news. <laughs> we're all gonna perish. Because God is holy, He cannot allow sin. Parang yung nanay ko, dun sa, sa mansion namin sa Kabanatuan. <clears throat> sobrang linis ang nanay ko sa bahay. Sobrang talagang linis siya sa bahay. Hindi ko alam eh. May mga times, kunyari, uh, Jeffrey, halika. <laughs> Jeffrey, ang paggalit. Eh. Jeffrey, halika. Halika ko. Yuko may mata mo, ulo mo. Nakita mo yan? Ano po yun? Alikabok yan. Oh, ganun katindi. Nakikita niya alikabok, okay? <laughs> Sabi ko, alikabok, nakita mo? Sobrang lilis ng bahay namin. Pagkagaling ako sa, sa laro, sa, nakipaglaro ako sa labas sa mga kapitbahay ko, tapos may iba pang term yung nanay ko, yung amoy araw. Ginamit ba na nanay yun? Sabi ko, amoy mo na ba yung araw, nai? Say, amoy araw ka, hindi ka pwede pumasok sa bahay. Kasi yung, yung, yung kahit tanggalin mo yung, yung chinelas mo, pagpasok mo sa bahay, dudumi and all, ayaw niya yon. Ganun siya kalini sa bahay. Eh, labing walo yung kwarto namin sa bahay. Kung saan ako dumadaan. <laughs> hindi ako makapasok because of her cleanliness. And God is holy. He cannot allow sin and all of us are sinful. That's why wrath is coming. Yung anger niya. Judgment is on the way. And the ultimate destination of lahat tayo rito is death. We'll perish. Eternal death. Kahit gano'ng kakabait. That's why in Romans, thanks be to God, di pa tapos yung preaching kasi kung tinapos ko, uwi tayong talunan. We're gonna look at the story in Romans. Wow, meron palang book of romance. Hindi romance. Okay, romance. Okay? Kala nyo may 50 shades of grey dito yung mga nagbabasa dyan, ha? Pag naging movie, wag yung panoorin. Okay? The book of romance... It's, he's going to look at the book of Romans in chapter 2 because here we find the implication of God's holiness. Romans was written around 57 AD by Apostle Paul on, the way, on his way to Jerusalem. And he's longing to see the Ro- yung mga Romans because hindi pa siya nakakapunta ron. And the focus of this chapter 2 is really giving us an implication because God is holy. Ito yung mangyayari sa atin pag hindi tayo nakinig sa pangatlong part. Romans 2 verse 5, it says, But because of your stubbornness, Sino rito yung stubborn? Alam yung stubborn? Yung alam mo nang mali, ginagawa mo pa? Ang hirap naman kasi. Di ba? Na-experience yun na ba yung gusto mong bumaed pero di mo magawa? <laughs> Boom! Di ba? Na-experience mo na ba yun? Yung alam mo yung dapat gawin pero hindi mo ginagawa. Yun namang hindi dapat gawin, that's what you keep on doing. It's a struggle. Gusto mong patawarin yung kapitbahay mo, ang ingay na kakaraoke hanggang alauna na madaling araw kanina. <laughs> May pinagdadaanan eh, no? <laughs> Magpipreach pa ako ang ingay nila. Para, ah, gusto ko na rin makikanta, pero mga worship songs sana kakantahin ko. 
Or you preaching ko ilapas kong ganon sa malaki kong boombox. You see, there's something in us that's stubborn and your unrepentant heart. And here's the problem. Pag meron ka nun, that you're stubborn, you're unrepentant, alam mong mali, hindi ka mag-sorry, you're storing up wrath. Hindi si Ratatouille yan na rat, okay? Yung wrath na to, when you say wrath, it's anger against yourself for the day of God's wrath. The word wrath or anger has something to do with namumula yung ilong. Nung ginamit po yung original context, pag si God galit, yung palang namumula yung ilong sa galit. Because here's the implication, here's the result of His holiness. Because God is holy, man's sin has brought about God's wrath. Kasi daw po tayo mga makasalanan, makulit, we want to be God. We're sharing His glory sa kung sa ano-anong carve idols, we're sharing His glory sa money, we're sharing His glory to fame. Ang glory na pupunta sa atin, sikat ka na, andai mo ng pera, and then all glory belongs to you. Then God will say, I won't share my glory. That's why I'm against you. That's why God, God's wrath is coming. If you look at any concordance po sa bookstore or in, sa, sa internet, concordance means yung pag-aaral po ng Biblia, either sa book na pwede niyong aralin. There's more uh, mention of wrath ni God, fury, anger, than God's love and kindness. Wow. The Bible talks more about God's wrath. Common sense, if God loves what is right because He's morally pure, God loves what is pure and good and who conforms to His standard, moral standard, then automatically, yung kapaligtaran is true. He hates, actually, sin. Ang dami pong sangkatuta kang kwento po sa Bible about God's wrath. And isang example lang po may bibigay ko sa inyo, isang story sa Exodus 32, 9 to 10. I've seen these people, remember si Moses? <laughs> Nilabas ni God yung mga two, Two million plus Israelites from the hand of Egypt that they've been slaves for 400 years. And then, magiging free na sila. They're gonna be brought to this land of flowing milk and honey. But then, ang kukulit ng mga tao na to, rebellious, sangkatutak yung, yung reklamo. Alam niyo yun? Bina mo, magreklamo yung anak mo, di ba? Ang complain ng complain anak mo, isa lang, na, naririndi tenga mo. Imagine magreklamo, two point plus million. <laughs> Alam mo yun, ano ba naman ito, Moses? Puro na lang kami, pagod na pagod na kami, wala kaming makain dito sa may desert. Anong ginawa ni God? Nagpaulan ng ano, uh, um, coco crunch. <laughs> Kumain kayo, iba-ibang flavor, may choco flavor, may corn flavor, kum- butter flavor, coco crunch for 40 years for free. Yung mana from heaven. And then, ah, mukha na kaming tinapay, Moses. Wala ba namang iba? Naghanap sila ng meat. Si God sabi, nakakulit Moses na mga yan. Doon nga sa Egypt, nilalating ko sila and all. Uh, uh, Lord, bigyan na natin ng meat. Okay, sige, binigyan ng meat, binigyan ng pugo. Kaya nausong kwek-kwek, tokneneng, lahat. <laughs> Natuto silang gumawa ng itlog ng pugo na kwek-kwek. Yung orange, yung tokneneng, lahat na. na. Sabi ni God, sige, hanggang lumabas sa tengal nila yung mga, mga, mga quails na yan. Pa, kainin mo. So dumami mga tao, may balahibo na yun. Oh, na kwek. And then, reklamo pa rin ang reklamo. Sabi ni God, finally, I've seen these people. Now, therefore, let me alone, Moses. M- Moses, tumabi ka. That my wrath may burn hot against them. Sabi ni God, Moses, tumabi ka. Yung 2.3 na yan, isang bagsak lang yan. Boom! Tunaw yan. Gagawin ko silang whatever. And I may consume them. Galit na galit si God. Ang kukulit. And then, sabi ni Moses, God, wag naman. Maawa ka naman. And then, Moses, wag mo akong pangunahan. Parang ganun lang nila. Wag kang mag-ialam, Moses. Susunukin ko lahat yan because galit na galit ako sa kanila because they're just piling and piling sin and sin over and over again. But then Moses stood in the gap. Sabi niya, God, mag-isip ka. Okay. Nilabas mo kami rito. Ano sabi ng mga Egyptian? Dinala mo kami rito para patayin lahat. Pagbigyan mo na lang yung mga yan. Because God's wrath means that He intensely hates all sin. God's wrath means that He intensely hates all sin. As with other attributes of God, pag tiningnan mo, yung God's wrath is seemingly negative. But you see, you should be thankful that God hates sin. Imagine for a moment, a God who doesn't hate sin. Imagine a God na hindi galit sa sin. It's either He's gonna be delighted to it or dead ma to it. Ay, dami na nagpapatay sa ira, kaya mo na lang sila. It just sends a sense of assurance sa iyo. If you experience injustice, nakita niyo na ba yung isang bata sa Amerika, pumunta sa, sa, sa isang school, pinagbabaril lahat ng kaklasmate na nagpatay? 
Kung walang sense of justice si God, and then lahat tayo, we're hopeless. Yung batang ginahasa po sa news every other day kung ano mga ginagawa ng mga lukulukong tao ngayon. Imagine ko if there's no God that will eventually bring His whole wrath sa mga gumagawa na ito. Then there's no justice. Because God is holy. Yung wrath, na, wrath niya naghihintay sa mga sinful na tao. Number two, ano pa implication? Because God is holy, sin has to be judged. That's what I'm saying. Imagine a judge. Sabi niya, anong kaso mo? Uh, ako po ay pumatay at nanggahasa ng mga kabataan. Ay, loving ako sa ka-merciful na judge. Sige na, palayain na yan. Imagine a judge like that. Hindi mo igagalang, right? Kahit loving siya, kahit merciful siya, but because hindi niya binigyan ng judgment na tama. Because our judge, sabi dito, when His righteous judgment will be revealed, there will come a time we're gonna, we're gonna experience the righteous judgment of God. God will repay each person according to what they have done. One aspect of God's holiness is His perfect justice. And He's a righteous judge. Napansin nyo ba yung sa, eh, example lang to, sa Senate natin ngayon? Those very people na nag-judge kay Justice Corona, sila naman ngayon ang tinatry. Nakita niyo na ba? So, the very people na nagbigay ng verdict kasi corrupt siya, now they're being tried by corruption. <laughs> Parang, meron din pala silang ginagawa, not saying it's, ano na, final, but the point is, this judge, wala siyang kakorrupt-corruption sa katawan. That's why he's gonna be righteous in his judgment. And he will repay everything na ginawa natin because the word justice means as it should be. Nag-U-turn ka sa walang U-turn, tinikitan ka, you get what you deserve, that's justice. Justice is one of God's attributes that flows out of His holiness. And the problem is, kanina, sinabi ko kanina, all of us are sinful in His sight. And then in 1 John 3, for everyone who sins, break the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Nakikita niyo na yung problema, no? Because God is holy. We're sinful. We're stubborn. We're unrepentant. There's wrath coming. And He's gonna judge us according to what we have done. We cannot begin to understand God's justice unless we first understand yung sin. Pag naintindihan mo tong sin, maintindihan mo na ganun to ka-offensive kay God. Na it's a crime against God. In fact, it says here, the word sin is to miss the mark. To violate God's law. Yung po yung sabihin ng sin. Hamartia. You're missing the mark that God has set us. Ang problema lang sa atin, hindi natin minsan mag-gauge kung gano'n tayo kasama. Parang yung feeling mo, Pastor, hindi mo lang gano'n kasama. Compare mo ko kay Hitler. Ang bait ko. Of course, kay Hitler mo kinumpare yung sarili mo. But you see, when we fully understand the holiness of God, we will understand the depth of our sin. Compared to others, we're better. Saka tayo, ang gusto mo i-compare yung mga masasamang tao. Yung pair mo yung sarili mo kay Mother Teresa, sige nga, gano'n ka kabae. Illustration, I was playing, I, I, I love basketball. I'm a former PBA player, Philippine Bowling Association. <laughs> I'm a former player po and all sa, sa isang barangay namin. So, akala ko magaling na ako maglaro. So one time, I was playing dito sa Valley Verde 2, sa harapan ng bahay na Pastor Joey. So play, play. Tapos may isang bata na bagong pasok. Parang lit, lit. Kalaban pa namin. Kaya-kaya ko to. So yung bata na yan, apparently, hindi pa siya ganun kasikat. Si L.A. Revilla. So a UAAP player po yan. So nung nakalaro ko siya, sabi ko, bata lang to. Kaya-kaya ko to. And then, boom, segundo lang. Parang ginawa lang akong ispatan. Lahat na shoot niya, parang nakanganga lang ako. Babantayan ko siya, nasa likod ko na. Parang, parang flash. Tapos yung pagka na fast break sa kanya, hindi ko mahabol to the point na hinabol ko siya na wala na ako nang hininga, naubusan ako, gumugulong ako, kakahabol sa kanya. Sabi ko, ha? Kala ko magaling na ako. No, imagine for a moment, makaka one to one ko si Lebron James. Six foot eight, 250 pounds, two NBA championship, four MVPs, ten times all-star player. Imagine kung siya yung makaka one to one ko, you think magaling pa ako maglaro? Kahit plus 20 ako sa 21 game na labanan, hindi ako makaka-score dyan kay Lebron James. That's the point. When we look at ourselves as less sinful, because we're trying to compare, if you compare it to God's holiness, we all fall short. Because we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. Jeff, may kabutihan naman ako. Yeah, Good, sabi ni Isaiah. 
All of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. <laughs> Jeff, nagpatayo ako ng hospital. Jeff, nagpakain ako. Yes, compared to his standard of holiness, of his moral purity and moral value, yung good works mo rito sa lupa, kahit napakabait mo, pinanganak kami, rosario, pinanganak kami, halo, pinanganak kami, kasama Bible, pinanganak kami, tatakala ng victory sa noo, kahit gano kakabait. <laughs> All of your righteous acts are like filthy rags. You know the original Hebrew word for filthy rags? Excuse sa mga nagbe-breakfast, na mga nasa bahay, at sa ating mga nanonood sa buong mundo. The word filthy rags means menstrual rag. Wow, kadiri. The word filthy rags, compared po ni God, yung good works mo are like menstrual rag. Sa palingin ko. And you think you're holy. You think you're good. But all your righteous act compared to a Lebron James holiness and goodness, that's nothing. Ni hindi ka baka earn ng one point kay God. Because we're sinful. Akala mo lang mabait ka. Mabait ka compared to your husband, to your wife, to your neighbors. But compare it to God, na, zero. Wala kang points. Walang good works. So Jeff, because God is holy, man, sin has brought about God's wrath, sin has to be judged. And lastly, because God is holy, ito na yung problema natin. Apart from the grace of God, we will all die. We will all perish. The word perish means we're going to die. The word perish, eternal death. In hell. Hell po ito, ah. In Hebrews, let's move on. Uh, sorry, in Romans, tuloy natin yung chapter 2. For God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. God and sin cannot coexist. That's why according to this um, uh, 19th century uh, bishop, the first bishop of Liverpool, J.C. Ryle, heaven is a holy place. The Lord of heaven is a holy God. The angels are holy creatures. The inhabitants are holy saints. Holiness is written on everything in heaven. And nothing unholy can enter into heaven. Wow. Lahat tayo, let me just review it sa mga medyo uh, uh, visual learner dito. Hmm. God is holy, morally pure, distinct. He cannot allow sin to fester. Now on the other side, we're sinful. God is hidden His face. We cannot go to God. We're all gonna die in hell. For the wages of sin is death. That's a problem right there. Lahat tayo destined to die of eternal death. And heaven and sinners cannot coexist. Let me illustrate that. Sino gusto ng chips dito? Sino yung gusto ba ng chips? Ikaw, Gwapo, alika dito. Bibigyan kita ng chips. Simple lang papagawa ko sa'yo. Iinom ka lang ng tubig. Come here. Winter. Winter, just to show you kung gano'ng ka-importante po ito. Winter, gusto mo ba ng lace? Expiration na to, mamayang 10 o'clock. So, pwede mo na tong kainin lang kan 10 o'clock. Simple lang papagawa ko sa'yo, Winter. Tumingin ka sa camera. Maraming nanonood sa'yo mga taga Middle East yan, okay? Bawal bumate. Okay. Ang gagawin mo lang, Winter, iinumin mo lang tong isang baso ng tubig na to. Okay. Pero sa tenga mo papadala. Hindi, joke lang. Okay. So, so, simple lang. Winter, iinumin mo isang baso ng tubig na yan. Very clean, pure, natural drinking water. Sa'yo na yung lace. Okay? Deal? Kami tayo, para deal. Okay, good. Okay. But wait, meron lang ako isa pang idadagdag. Come here, papadagdag nga natin. Meron lang ako idadagdag na konti lang. At med medyo ano to, oo, medyo ano to, delikado itong idadagdag ko. But kailangan ko mag-gloves. Diyan ka lang, meron ka namang ano eh. Don't worry. Yan. Baliktad. Whatever. Yan. Alright. So, galing ko siya delikado to. Okay. So, this is a muriatic acid. Well, bumubutas to ng bituka. But don't worry, ano ka ba? Hindi naman to ano. 0.001% lang ilalagay natin. One, isang patak lang. Yon, there you go. Isang patak lang. Okay. So, yung isang patak na yan, um, don't worry, mga ilang buwan pa bago mag mabutas yung bituka mo. But then again, this is... Yan, nag, ano na, nag, 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 uh, nag mix na siya. So meron siyang 100% pure water, but 99.9 na lang siya dahil meron 1% of this thing, muriatic acid. So, iinumin mo pa rin ba yan? <laughs> Dapat hindi. Okay. 
y lo mismo para Limbayán. Sí. Indira y ahí no me. Piche, no me anda como para Indira que te quiten el lace. Ay, me puta se empitó acá y no. You see, that's the point. Imagine this water. Sa ina ngatong malis ka na. Ni si Rami ano ko. Palakpakan natin si Winter. I mean, this is a 99.9% pure drinking water. Meron lang 0.001 na muriatic acid. But then again, you won't drink it. This water is good for nothing. You just have to throw it away. And sometimes we think that tayo, hindi naman ako ganun kasalanan. I don't need to be holy. But you see, every ounce of sin meron po siyang kapat, kar, karampatang kasalanan and the wages of sin is death. Sin has a cost and a price to be paid and that is death. Every time you enter to sin, death follows. Relationship na maayos, lagyan mong kalokohan, it will die. Business na maayos, lagyan mong kalokohan, it will die. Eh, Pastor Pacho, mga gun runner, drug lords, they're gonna die. Sira pamilya noon, sira lahat ng meaningful relationship noon, mga drug addicts na push ng drug, sira yo, wag mo intin, wag mo maingitan doon. They're all gonna die. Physically, ang worse, spiritually dead. Now in the Old Testament, God introduces something for the death, for the sin. Pinakita ni God, you have to kill an animal. A blood needs to be shed. Para may kabayaran yung kasalanan mo. So every time pumapunta sila sa church, pero silang dalang mga animals, ng boso ko, may dala lang kalapate, something like that. I, I killed the person, may dala kang lamb. Just to show, God is showing them a picture that when you sin, something needs to die. An animal in that case needs to die in the Day of Atonement. The high priest will bring these two goats. One, papatayin for the sin of all Israel. And the one, I, yung tinatawag na scapegoat, papakawalan. Because an animal sacrifice is just a picture for them to understand yung sinfulness mo may namamatay. Your irresponsibility will be a responsibility ng ibang bagay in the case ng hayop. Na an animal, um, a life, because blood always symbolizes life, an animal needs to die because of your sin. But those sacrifices, it said in Hebrews 10, 3 to 4, are an annual reminder of sins. Ipinaparamdam lang sa kanila, ganito kayo kakasalanan. But it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That's why lahat tayo, these three implications, the wrath, the judgment, and eventually will perish, is coming our way. It's just a matter of time. Now, there's two ways for you para maka-escape dito. Number one, through your own effort, maging holy ka. Try mo maging holy with all the things that you can do. Try to be holy. Pakain ka na mahirap. Go, go. Just go for it. But then again, we cannot do that because ang umpisa natin, ang starting point natin, we're sinful. We cannot save ourselves. Now, there's another way to do it. If someone will pay for your sin. If someone will die on your behalf, now thanks be to God, hindi niya tayo iniwan in this state. Because God, the Bible says, He is patient, not wanting anyone to perish. That's why in Hebrews 10, 5, therefore, when Christ came into the world, that's our hope. During those times na wala pa si Jesus Christ, they're hoping for the Messiah to come. That will eventually, the perfect Lamb of God will die on their behalf. Jesus Christ came into the world and He said this in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8. Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire. Nor were you pleased with them though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then He said, here I am. So God, Jesus was talking to His Father in heaven. I know God. Father, itong mga sacrifices nila for the past thousands of years, the animals that were killed, you're, you're not pleased with them. But then when the opportune time comes, God sent His very own Son and He said, Here I am, God. I have come to do your will. Imagine for a moment that time in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
When Jesus was torn, bibigay ko ba yung buhay ko or hindi na lang? Imagine for a moment that time when Jesus said, Father, if it's possible, not my will. If it's possible na itong, itong cup na to, will you take this cup away from me? Wag ko nang pagdaanan yung cross. Father, baka naman ibahin natin yung plano. Wag na lang ako mamatay on, the, on behalf of these people. Baka this another way. But then Jesus, kumambyo siya, but not my will, but yours be done. Because the Father, parang seemingly, the Father is saying, anak, there's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other person that can pay for the sin of humanity because you're the only sinless human being na kaya magbigay nun. That's why when Jesus said, I have come to do your will, because of that, in verse 10, and by that, will, we have been made holy. Wow. The wrath, the judgment, the perishing is no longer on us. They put everything on Jesus Christ through the sacrifice of the body of Christ once and for all. That's why these three things, the implication of God's holiness, the wrath, the judgment, the perish, there's only one way. When Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and me, those three things came to Him. One blow. One blow. The wrath, the full wrath of God. Na, na recall nyo ba yung moment when sabi ni Jesus, why have you forsaken me? A lot of people are asking me that. Jeff, Pastor Jeff, bakit sinabi tong, why have you forsaken me? He, did he doubted God? No. Because the very moment when Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? That's when the time when every sin from the time ni Adam and Eve accumulated in one blow, binigay niya kay Jesus Christ. He had to carry the full wrath of God. In fact, the reason why he said, why have you forsaken me? Because the Father, the presence of the Father left him. And when the full blow of that wrath was thrown into Jesus, imagine for a moment, diba, if you're living in sin, ang bigat. Di ba kung may tinatago kang kasalanan, ang bigat? Di ba kung meron kang murder, whatever kind of sin you have, di ba ang bigat? Imagine the sin of the whole world, isang bagsak binigay sa'yo. That's what happened at the cross. The whole vent of God, the full wrath of God, full force, 100%, binigay niya kay Jesus Christ, the wrath, the judgment, and Jesus had died. Somebody needs to die so that you may live. Jesus Christ did not come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. Because we're dead. We're walking dead. We're all dead in our transgressions. That's why if you're here, at wala kang idea ng holiness ni God, you're living life, kaya sera, sera, hindi mo naintindihan yung holiness ni God. So if you're here today, you don't understand what transpired the cross. Now Jesus had to bear the burden of that wrath, judgment, then you're missing a lot. You're gonna live your life. Parang, okay lang. Hingi na lang ako ng tawad. So if, you're, if you call yourself a Christian, at panay pa rin kalokohan ginagawa mo, you don't have a repentant heart, you're just missing a whole chunk of your Christian life. You don't know what holiness means. That God will never allow sin to fester. That unforgiveness sa heart mo, please, tanggalin mo na yan because God is intensely hateful of that unforgiveness sa heart mo. Jeff, hindi mo, I don't care. Hindi ko alam ang buhay mo. But God sent His Son to die for you. Ano yung hindi mo kayang i-forgive? Tell me. If God didn't choose to ask you bago kita i-forgive, ano muna yung kaya mong gawin sa anak ko? No. He just gave His one and only Son to die for you. So if you're living in sin today, stop. Please. God is holy. He will not allow sin. That's the implication of His holiness. That's what you need to understand. Let's all stand on our feet today. The cross, every time you see a cross, guys, please understand fully that God had paid an ultimate price of sending His Son to you and me for our sin. Kaya nga mga kapatid, if you're still living in sin, if you're, 
if you call yourself a Christian, paglabas mo rito, puro kalako ang ginagawa mo, niloloko mo lang yung sarili mo, you're just merely existing. You're just merely attending church. Now, I'm all for it. There's a struggle. Hello, yung impatience ko. It's a constant struggle for me. But then I have to rely on God's grace and say, Lord, give me the grace this morning to make it through the day. If you're struggling with pornography, you're struggling with unforgiveness, you're struggling with, with greed, if you're struggling with anything, envy, there's no room for that for Christians. Because God intensely hates all those things to the point He had to send His Son. Ganun niya kagalit. Because He is a righteous judge, hindi ko pwedeng palampasin to. Hindi ko pwedeng ipikit na lang mata ko. Mahal ko kayo mga anak. Sige, God, just continue doing what you're doing. No, no, I'm righteous. I have to ask for complete, exact payment. And a picture of that is like a judge who gave the sentence, mamamatay ka of silly electrica or, or lethal injection. But that after declaring the judgment, the judge, hinupad niya yung robe niya and says, don't worry. Ako yung uupo doon sa silya. Ako yung magtitake ng lethal injection. That's a picture. God sent His Son to die for you and me. So stop living in sin. Let's all raise our hands. Father, we're sorry. We're sorry, Lord, because we have an incomplete picture of Your holiness. Na nilalaro-laro lang namin yung Christianity. Aaten dito ng linggo, makikipaglokohan sa girlfriend namin sa lunes. Aaten lang dito, mandadaya sa school sa Monday. Aaten lang dito, and then yung kalokohan sa business. Aaten dito, makikipag-flirt sa office mate. Lord, we're sorry. Lord, will just forgive us? If you're so serious of dealing with sin to the point of sending your son, how can we take it lightly? How can we live in such a way na parang okay lang yan kay God? Mabait naman siya. But Lord, help us today to understand the depth of our sin. Because we have fully understood the holiness, your holiness, that you intensely hate all sin. So Lord, tulungan niyo po kami in behalf of my congregation here. We're sorry flirting, texting, having this unforgiving heart, Lord, help us to say, Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Starting today, we'll no longer play with sin. So, Lord, the stubbornness, the unrepentant heart ng mga taong nandito ngayon, kitang-kita mo, Lord, sila. And I hope that the declaring is stop, enough. I'm just gonna honor you today because I am worshiping a holy Morally pure, transcendently holy God. Lord, we're sorry. Patawarin niyo po kami. But Lord, starting today, paglapas namin sa room na yan, we're gonna text those people. We're gonna say we're sorry. We're gonna text those people. And we're gonna say, I have forgiven you. We're gonna text those people and say, stop of this, this un- professional or ungodly way of dealing with business. So, Father, thank you. Tulungan niyo po kami to have the courage to say no to ungodliness. I know it's gonna be hard, but thanks be to God that He who is in us is greater than He who is in the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give Him praise. Our God is a holy God. God bless you.